it's very clear that innovation is the engine of commerce and that commerce is the engine of change. So as students are coming into the world of work, for example, in production, they have choices and they have a great opportunity to see a lot of choices very quickly all at once. And so I think the exciting things for people are to be able to do things that are principled. And innovation, principled innovation is a primary opportunity for some young person to find blissful behavior in a meaningful way. So I, I see immense opportunity in the in these things. And we're seeing new technologies every day. That's what we work with here. We see new forms of energy we haven't seen before, literally brand new, coming in, and we're seeing them working, and they're surprising. Most scientists would turn and run if they knew what it was. We're seeing new materials like graphene coming in at scale all of a sudden within the last year that it, the implications are immense for a single layer of carbon and what it can do in terms of conductivity, and heat, electricity, and so on. Amazing. So there's all kinds of new things that are just going to be incredibly disruptive. And when you're 20 years old, disruption shouldn't be too scary. So, you know, we just see, we see this, the younger people coming in droves. Are there some things that you would like to uh, focus on? Well, right now I'm working on how to take polymers, plastics of all kinds around the world and turn them into good use mine the garbage for free materials. Because in the first industrial revolution, nature never sent us a bill. The materials were there for the taking. We took the trees, we took the minerals, we took the rivers. And at this point, I think we should take the things we took before, retake them, remake them, and put them into human utility in a resourcefulness which puts the re back into resources. So we don't have to mine the earth again and destroy it in order to have things that we can share. Because what worries me now is the world is being seen as full of limits, which causes us to have greed. So we see a world of limits and greed, and the question of commerce itself has become, how much can I get for how little I give? And I'd like to reverse that and say, the question can come to a world of abundance and sharing. So the question becomes, how much can we give for all that we get. So the idea of doubling our resources by reusing everything over and over again is a very short-term idea because we can triple, quadruple, depends on how many generations we reuse things. So if all we do is design things that are poison and recycle them and say we're good because we're recycling, we're not good, we're just recycling poison. So untoward products being recycled are untoward products. So. I'd like to see that idea of not wondering about end of life for products. These aren't living things. We should talk about end of use and next use like that. That's one thing. The other is carbon. I think we've seen carbon now as an enemy. And we talk about limiting our carbon, reducing carbon, bad carbon. Well, that's a sad thing. A carbon at this point in history has become a toxin. So a material in the wrong place is a toxin. Lead in a river is toxin. Carbon in the atmosphere is toxin at this point. Car there's nothing wrong with carbon. We are carbon. So there's good carbon and bad carbon. So I'm looking at good carbon. So we can reduce the bad carbon, of course. So nothing more to the atmosphere in terms of carbon. So we see carbon going to the soils as working carbon because it restores carbon balances and can accrue carbon in soil. A great place to accrue carbon is in roots of plants and in healthy soils. And then the other is what I call um, durable carbon, which is polymers and things like that. So instead of taking the plastics and then saying we have waste to energy and burning plastics, must be crazy. You're just putting it in the atmosphere. And so we look at those things and say these are materials as durable carbon for reuse. So let's start redesigning all the polymers so they can be reused. And let's take all the ones we've done, which are many of which are very indiscriminately considered, and put them into good use in terms of various materials, or we can do pyrolysis to bring them back to 
to methane and syngas, but let's do it in order to remake polymer, not burn it into the atmosphere. So I think I just see the two fundamental issues of our time right now are one would be atmospheric and the other would be material intelligence and management.